What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video and as you can see from the title of this video this is a Q&A video and uh, the reason for this is basically because of uh, a couple of questions that I got um, on Instagram as well as on Facebook asking where the Friday YouTube upload went. So um, it's been a while now since I've uploaded on a Friday. Um, it used to always be Mondays and Fridays that I uploaded on YouTube. Stopped doing the Friday uploads and then got a couple of questions. To be fair, I, di I didn't think a lot of people would notice, but um, apparently they did. You know, they said, you know, where's the Friday upload? What happened to the Friday upload? Blah, blah, blah. And the reason that I've stopped uploading on a Friday is because I now go live in the Facebook group, the Lifestyle Design Community, which is a free Facebook group um, for aspiring agency owners, you know, to basically help them get started with their agency, get their agency up and running, you know, how to get the first clients and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of free resources in the Lifestyle Design Community Facebook group as well, including a free beginner course, so how to get started with SMA. Um, how to use freelancer websites like Upwork, etc., to get your first clients in, stuff like that. Basically, a bunch of resources that usually people would charge for. I'm uh, charging nothing and offering it for free in the Facebook group. So, if you're interested in joining the Facebook group and you'll be able to attend um, Q and A's like the one that you'll see in this video, then all you need to do is uh, click on the link in the description box down below and uh, sign up for it. It's completely free, free Facebook group. Um, it's literally just a community, basically. Um, and every single Friday I have been going live or since starting the, or the 15 minute Friday basically I've been going live and uh, that is the reason why I've stopped uploading on YouTube because I'm live in the Facebook group. So what you'll see in this video is a snippet of the Facebook live where I basically just you know engage with you guys, answer questions that you guys have regarding SMA, regarding and having an advertising agency, regarding Facebook ads and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, just to spend some time in the community and uh, answer questions that you guys have. You know, that is all happening in the Facebook group on a Friday, so uh, that is the reason for me not uploading on YouTube anymore. So without rambling on too much, the next snippet will basically be um, me in the Facebook group basically going live and answering questions that you guys have. Like this video if you got something out of it, if there was a question that you had that was answered in the group. Subscribe to this channel if you want to see the Monday uploads uh, because you know I usually go a bit more in-depth and detail in the videos on YouTube, you know, try and provide more value at a bit of a higher level, a bit more higher quality as well. Whereas uh, the Facebook group is very raw, right? It's very um, unedited, you know, just my personal opinion on some things and, and so on and so forth. So subscribe to this channel, check out the Facebook group, and I'll see you all in the next video. No, I don't waste no time. Yo, yo, what's going on, guys? We are live for another 15-minute Friday, which we all know never ends up being 15 minutes. We're always going on for much, much longer than uh, than we say we are. But I'm on time, actually, today. It's only 10 past 3. Usually, I'm, I'm 45 minutes late with this, but uh, on time today. So let's uh, hop into your questions. My apologies. Let me just switch off the notifications. Um, and then mute that there we go okay so live in the group let me see what the questions are and also let me just double check that everything is set up correctly stream health looks fine and we've got our first viewer unknown viewer introduce yourself in the comments and also let me know in the comments if the audio and the video is both fine as well um obviously we've had it in the past a few times where the audio has been very crackly and that the video hasn't been of a high enough quality also i uh, got a few comments from last week's live where i used restream which is basically a streaming software that allows me to show my screen as well as myself uh, you guys commented that the quality was lower so we're just back on the normal stream now as well and um, three viewers so far like i said viewers feel free to introduce yourself in the comments just so I can see who is watching. And um, any questions regarding agency life, whether that is outreach, Facebook ads, um, e-commerce, iOS 14, you know, whatever you want, uh, drop them in the comments and uh, I'll be sure to answer any questions you have got. Also, um, I am recording this on another screen here as well, or another camera, I should say. 
for the YouTubes, just to show people on YouTube what they are missing out on if they're not in the Facebook group. So if you catch me like glancing to the left every now and again, that is the reason why. And um, I've got this like bug on my camera where every 15 minutes it actually stops recording. So every now and again, I will check to the left to make sure that um, everything is still up and running and we are still recording everything. So yeah, like I said, drop a comment if the audio and the video is fine. You can hear me okay. And uh, just to introduce yourself, like I said, and then in the meantime, I'll have a quick look at the questions that you guys um, commented below my little sort of announcement post yesterday. And then what I'll also do is I'll open up a new tab um, just so I can see the comments as well as you guys. There we go. Okay, Tristan, how are you doing, pal? You said you need to deliver LinkedIn ads. Can you recommend someone? Um, LinkedIn, do I know a LinkedIn expert? To be fair, not in terms of media buying. There's a few people that I know that are very active on LinkedIn, but not in terms of media buying. You know, of course, um, everything regarding Facebook ads is, uh, is what I do and what my expertise lies in. LinkedIn, not so much. I've tried LinkedIn for the agency, so I tried running agency ads. Uh, on LinkedIn, the flow was ads on LinkedIn, of course, to landing page, to consultation call, to thank you page. And the CPM was through the roof. Um, I did get, I got clicks, but yeah, it just wasn't wasn't the same as Facebook ads. And the thing with LinkedIn ads, because I understand like the sort of misconception, right? Like LinkedIn is for B2B and uh, Facebook is not for B2B and people on Facebook come there to relax rather than to look at business opportunities. Like I understand that. But with that said, Facebook has so much data on us, so much more than LinkedIn, uh, you know, the LinkedIn ad platform that Facebook is, you can just target so specifically with Facebook um, as opposed to LinkedIn. And despite the fact that yes, business owners are on LinkedIn and you can even target like CEOs for specific companies on LinkedIn, Facebook just seems to be much more effective and much more specific data wise. So uh, that's the reason why I prefer Facebook ads over LinkedIn. And with that said, LinkedIn ads obviously hasn't been here for as long as Facebook ads, at least not to my knowledge. Um, so that might also be the reason why Facebook ads is much more developed and uh, um, the possibilities are you know, much larger than with LinkedIn ads. Let's see, we've got Dom in the chat. Welcome mate, Ethan. Welcome pal, the legend himself. Uh, we'll watch after in lessons right now. Fair enough, mate. Um, yeah. Do your lessons and then um, feel free to tune in. And uh, any questions, Ethan, just just let me know, man, and I'll get sure to. Well, I'll be sure to reply to them as soon as possible. And uh, Tristan says maybe I'll just check it out myself. Yeah, feel free to do so, mate. Like if you can understand marketing in its essence, you know it doesn't really matter what platform you run it on, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook. Just pick a platform that um, you know you have a preference for. Like I said, for me, it's Facebook. Um, but at the end of the day, the marketing stays the same, right? You know, you're trying to basically satisfy one's needs um, by promoting an, uh, an offer or a service that uh, can basically help, you know. So, yeah, whether that's on LinkedIn or Facebook, it doesn't really matter. But my preference goes out to Facebook. So anyway, um, let me just hop into the questions. Joel Adams says, have you ever had any issues regarding Clavio tracking conversions? If so, how did you fix this? conversions don't seem to be tracking accurately sometimes not at all okay so first thing that springs to mind is have you got um or actually what it could be scratch that new thought what i think it might be is your pages conversion window so um obviously now with facebook they've made the change from 28 day click one day view to one day view seven day click which means that the if someone, how can I explain this easily? So if someone clicks on your advertisement, so let's say I'm a customer of you, right? So you're running ads and um, I click on it and then within 28 days, so let's say on day 21, I think, you know what? I remember that ad that Joel put up um, from XYZ company. Let me go back via Google or whatever way of um, getting back onto the platform and make a purchase. Because it was in that 28 day time frame, because it was on day 21, Facebook will say, hey, that advertisement or that conversion, I should say, came from our ads. So then within the ads manager, you will be able to see that conversion. Now with the recent changes within Facebook, it's uh, basically decreased to seven day click, one day view, which means that if someone um, is part of your Clavio flow and on day eight, 
they get an email saying, hey, here's 20% off, um, you know, before, or, you know, come back and complete your order, then it's outside of that conversion window. So yes, Clavio will actually get a conversion, but you won't be able to see that in the ads manager. So I think that is what you mean, right, with the conversions, um, or it could be that you mean you can't see the conversions in Clavio, which, like I said, if they click on the email, then you should be able to see that within Clavio. If you're you know, meeting Facebook, then look into your conversion window, see when um, the conversion took place, like at what point, and then you can also check at what point they clicked on the advertisement, and you'll be able to see why you can't see that in um, in Facebook. But to be fair, with the track and etc., it is going to be more difficult going forward with all of the you know the iOS 14 stuff where people can opt out, etc. Um, it will be a bit more difficult to track all of this properly. But um, yeah, like I said, I think looking at your question now, Joel, um, it looks to be the pages conversion window or the uh, attribution settings, whatever you want to call it. If you go into your ads manager now, you'll be able to see what your attribution setting is um, set up to. For the new campaigns, it'll be seven days. For the older ones, it'll still be 28 because uh, you haven't basically made those changes yet. As soon as you edit the campaign, it'll automatically go to seven day because like I said, 28 days is no longer um, no longer gonna be possible moving forward, which to be fair for most of the uh, products and services that we are selling, because they are sort of impulse purchases with a sort of short decision span time frame. Um, it won't make much of a difference, but if you are selling higher ticket items where the decision time needs to be longer, then you know the 28 day thing, moving to the seven day attribution setting might be an issue going forward. Question from Diogo, how do you sell your services or what is the message in your video audits uh, loom to e-com companies that are already following all the best practices. I have the Facebook pixel installed of running ads, both video and photos, etc. Uh, it seems like everyone goes after the low hanging fruit, clients with no Facebook pixel, not running ads, but these clients are usually small and don't have the budget for an agency. Diogo, that is a very, very good question. And I appreciate you um, basically you know, commenting that question because it is something that I notice a lot of people sort of struggle with. So when the client has everything up and running, you obviously can't say, oh, well, you haven't got the pixel installed. You know, I can install a pixel and you, know, you, you can't do your, your standard little spiel, right? However, the already up and running businesses, the winning businesses, if you will, um, are actually much, much easier to help because they've already gone through that sort of period. Um, I think Brandon C, uh, high ticket closer and close friend of mine, he calls it Death Valley. So they've already been through that, that valley of death, right, where they've, you know, they need to overcome all those issues, etc., with setting everything up. Um, the business is proven, the products that they've gotten is proven, etc. Everything is up and running. And for basically you to go in and actually help those businesses, it's much, much easier um, to, well, first of all, get them as a client because, you know, a retainer of a decent size um, for them is much more of a feasible thing. You know, they can, they've got the um, cash flow basically to invest into something like that. And then when you actually do go in and run the ads for them, they've already got existing data, they've already got like the winning images, the winning products, etc. So for you to go in and just scale it, it's much, much easier, contrary to popular belief. You know, a lot of people think it's easier to go for startups because you can help them and you know, from them going to not run ads to run ads is going to be a big jump for them financially, um, you know, in getting uh, sales, etc. But actually it's the other way around, you know, the, companies that are already up and running to help them win more, basically, so help winners win more, it's uh, it's much, much easier. But then the question is, how do you get in touch with these people or what do you say to these people to get them on a call? And for me, usually, um, so obviously now we are running ads, so it's it's completely different, right? So if they book a call and we see that they're running ads, etc. cetera, um, so they book a call through our ads and we, we check out their stuff and we see that everything is set up correctly, we know, okay, despite the fact that everything is set up correctly, there's still something that they want to know or they still think there's more room for improvements. So then we can obviously you know, go in and say, well, listen, you booked a call, so obviously you're unhappy with the way things are now. So we can you know, help you take it to the next level. Where are you aspiring to go to? You know, we can see if we can get you there. Um, but you know, I'm guessing by the way you've worded this question that you are going after these companies and you want to know if it's worth um, pursuing those companies or not. What I usually do, 
uh, in situations. So I'm basically going to go back to the days where I wasn't running ads for my agency. Um, we would send out automated emails, right? So um, send out an email blast. And then from there, those that reply, we would send a loom or we'd follow up with them. And those that reply obviously are interested. Otherwise, they wouldn't reply, right? If let's say we say, listen, we've got an idea for you. We see that your ads aren't performing or something like that and they don't reply or they read and think, oh, hang on, my ads are performing fine. I don't need help from this guy here. Then, you know, we know, okay, there's no point in pursuing that because he hasn't replied. He's obviously not interested and so on and so forth. But if they do reply, then you know, okay, there is room for improvements because otherwise they wouldn't have replied in the first place. Then when you actually, um, you have a, so you've said video orders. So when you send the loom, you don't mention, oh, you haven't got the pixel or stuff like that you just comment on the advertisement that they currently have. So are they running it on all placements? Can you see right off the bat, you know, by looking into that ad library, that they have a retargeting campaign? What are they saying with the cold audiences? Are they running discounts at all steps of the flow? Or is it just uh, the bottom of the funnel? And so on and so forth, okay? So just critique what they're currently doing. And if you honestly don't think that you can help them, then by all means, you know, you, you, we're not forcing you to go after these companies. But if you think you can go in and improve what they're currently doing, no matter how small that little tweak is, you know, if they're spending 50,000 a, uh, a month and they're currently getting a two ROAS and you can, you know, confidently say that you can help them get a free ROAS, for them, that is an extremely big jump in page conversion value and revenue that they're generating. So even the smallest change, if you think you can help them, just go for it because, um, like I said, these established businesses will do everything uh, they can to you know get that solution and basically increase that pages conversion value because everything that they're doing already so far has worked has been proven right so for them to get to the next level is you know, something that is easily achievable then another question from diogo do you have a minimum ad spend you recommend for clients and how do you distribute the budget amongst top of funnel middle of funnel and bottom of funnel campaigns okay so i will get into that question in just a second let me just quickly see if the comments in the live are coming through and there's no issues with the stream. No, it seems to be fine. Okay, so um, minimum ad spend, it's gotta be a thousand a month to be firm. So our retainer, the minimum retainer that we now accept, you know, apart from the white label service is a thousand a month. So it wouldn't make sense if we're charging a thousand a month as a retainer for them to only have like a 300 budget. Because at the end of the day, we are aiming to get our clients a return on investment. So let's say we want to get them a 2x return on investment, 2x ROI. They've invested 1,000 into our retainer, 1,000, or not my apologies, 300 into the ads, which is 1,300. That means that if we want to get them a 2x ROI, that means that we need to get them 2,600 in purchase conversion value. But with that said, we've only got the 300 ad budget, right? So with 300 ad spend, you need to get them 2,600 in purchase conversion value. And what is that? Let's say 300 divided by 2,600 times 100, that is an 11 ROAS, which is quite difficult to be fair with a 300 ad budget, unless you run it all on bottom of funnel, but you know, eventually that bottom of funnel is gonna dry out without uh, you know, basically driving cold traffic to that store. So what we usually do is we want to have equal our retainer in ad spend, if not more. So with our minimum ad uh, retainer being 1,000, we want a minimum ad spend of a thousand as well, which is roughly 33 a day, or let's say 30 to 35 dollars a day, uh, or pounds, I should say, in ad spend, you know, for it to be feasible and for it to make sense uh, to take on the client. And it's also easier for us to get a return on, uh, on ad spend and return on investment for that client as well. Then, for the second part of the question, how do you distribute the budget amongst top, uh, middle, front, and bottom? Um, also, a quick tip for those of you that are working with companies or have just started working with a client that already has data, rather than setting up the top of the funnel right away, set up middle and bottom of the funnel first, get those quick wins from people that have engaged with them on uh, Instagram, engaged with them on Facebook, maybe a part of their email list, maybe have been on their website and so on and so forth. Retarget those people first, get those quick wins on your belt and then set up the top of the funnel. But uh, yeah, with regards of, or with regards to the distribution, um, what I would do, if you just run on top of funnel and bottom of funnel, 90, 10. So 90, uh, let me just quickly switch on the camera again, as I mentioned, after 50 minutes it goes off. Um, so top of the funnel, 90%, uh, bottom of funnel, 
or if you're running middle of funnel as well, then 75% top, 15% uh, middle, and then 10% bottom. Quickly doing the maths there, is that 100? I think it is, right? 75, 15, and 10? Yeah. Okay, so that is basically how I would do it. And then, let's see. So it says four comments, but I can only see three comments below that post. So maybe something's gone wrong there. Um, but anyway, that is, those are the comments below um, the post. So let me just go into the live now, see what we've got. Um, Murtada, welcome, man. Tom, Jürgen Klopp, Jürgen Klopp. Um, and then Tristan laughs at that. Let's see. Uh, so Murtada says, I'm actually running a conversion ad with a purchase event to a new client, but I can't get a single purchase till now. The click-through rate is too low. Well, yeah, if the click-through click rate is too low, then obviously you're not getting enough traffic through the flow to get a purchase. So that is the first thing you need to do, right? You need to improve that click-through rate. And for me, because obviously I, I mentioned, right, purchases is, is what counts. It's not about the click-through rate. It's, it's not about the cost per click, etc. But in this case, it is because if you can't get enough traffic to get a conversion, then, you know, obviously um, the, the flow has failed, basically, or the flow needs improving. So you've already basically answered your own question there. You need to improve that click-through rate. Um, and what I would quickly check, Martada, is as well, is uh, check the outbound click-through rates because those are basically the clicks that are going off of Facebook onto the landing page or onto the sales page or website, you know, whatever the flow is. Um, check that first. If the outbound click-through rate is below 1%, then test different images, test different copy, or look into the audiences. So what you can do is if you are running different audiences that are relatively small, try broad audiences. Um, why? Because nowadays with CBO, with the Facebook AI, etc., they Facebook knows much better than we do, right? What audiences they need to target. It's the feedback loop. So um, basically you have this big audience on Facebook. Um, let's say you run this in a uh, company in the UK. So you're targeting the whole of UK. You tell Facebook, okay, what I want you to do is target the whole of UK, but then optimize for purchase. So Facebook will then go into the UK audience and basically find people that are most likely to purchase. Then based on the traffic that goes through, so Facebook will basically see on a small scale, okay, um, this type of uh, person clicks on your ad, then it knows, okay, I need to optimize for more people like that. Then as soon as you get that first purchase, Facebook basically, you know, receives that purchase event fire and knows, okay, those are the type of people that I need to optimize for. And that is basically the learning phase. And for Facebook to exit the learning phase, you need 50 events in seven days. So you need 50 pages in seven days, basically to successfully, you know, get out of that learning phase. Uh, when starting out, I understand that it's quite difficult, but um, that's basically what Facebook recommends. But by giving Facebook that opportunity to target the whole of UK, Facebook will know right away, you know, okay, I need to target such and such a person, and then over time it will optimize. But if you tell Facebook, okay, you can only target people with, I don't know, a certain shoe size and, um, you know, a certain age, you know, a particular gender, and only interested in, you know, XYZ interests, then you know, you're basically starving Facebook of the opportunity to optimize. So um, if you're running it on interest, try broad. And if you are running it on broad, then try the opposite. Because um, like I said, it could be that because you were targeting broad and you're not getting a lot of purchases, that Facebook doesn't really know exactly which angle to go for or which particular audience within the bigger audience to go for. So if you then start using particular interests, you can basically see, okay, um, I don't know, for example, let's say it's it's um, it, it's shoes again. I don't know what what kind of clients or campaign you're running. Let's say it's shoes, and then you pick out the interests: uh, Puma, Adidas, Nike, etc. And you see, okay, Nike has got a high outbound click through rate. Then you know you can sort of figure out, okay, so people that are interested in Nike are more likely to uh, click through to the website, and it will basically give Facebook more data as well to move forward. And then from there, you can optimize again. So I hope that makes sense, Murtada. But yeah. If the click-through rate is low, you need to basically start uh, tweaking the front end. So changing the image, changing the audience, changing the copy. Matthew says, Josh the man, how you doing, pal? Hope you're doing well. Any questions, guys? Because we've obviously got four people now watching the live. Um, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer them. I'll just quickly refresh the other page to see if there are any more comments on that post. Let me see. So no, I can't see that fourth comment. I wonder what that is. Um, so I can see three, three com oh, there's four comments, but I can only see three of them, three questions. Um, so yeah, it's a mystery. 
But anyway, um, yeah, any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments regarding outreach, regarding Facebook ads, regarding clients, regarding AT Life in general, scaling, you name it. Um, I am basically here for, let's say, another five minutes, right? Before we wrap up. And uh, yeah, happy to answer any questions you guys have got. And um, for those of you that have seen or have not seen my post, I should say, in the community, we've basically completely revamped our hybrid outreach system. So our hybrid outreach system is basically an automated way of getting um, calls booked, appointments set, etc., replies from potential clients, etc. Um, and you know, it's like a it's like a three pronged attack. So we've run paid traffic as soon as you got to that point where your offer is proven, uh, automated outreach, and then you know we basically come at them from different angles, basically. And it's um, the reason why we call it hybrid is because it's half outsourced, half automated, 100% hands off. And uh, from there, you know, you can basically, it makes it easier, much, much easier, much more scalable um, to get calls booked because, you know, you can just see from the data what is going on, what you need to tweak, what you need to analyze. And then from there, you know, once you're getting calls booked, you've got much more time to focus on the service delivery, getting better results for your clients and keeping that door shut because, you know, if you're just losing clients as quickly as you're getting the clients in, you're just going to be in this vicious cycle, right? And it's that, it's the, the leaky cup concept again, where you're trying to fill a cup, but there's holes in the cup um, and, you know, all the water's coming out. So you can, you can pour as much water in that cup as possible, but it will never fill up to the top because it's, you know, it's coming out just as quickly as it's going in. Um, let's see, Matthew said, what would you, would you do the same for marine battery ads in Thailand? Do the same for what? <laughs> what, do, what do you mean, pal? The same for marine battery. What are marine battery? I'm gonna actually Google that now. Marine battery ads. Is with something like really logical what it, what it is, but I've honestly never heard of it. Marine battery ads. Let's see. Okay, so I'm getting all these random articles of cruise motors and stuff. I'm guessing that's not what it is. Yeah, honestly, I'm baffled, mate. What is a, batteries for boats and golf buggies. Ah, okay, fair enough. So, uh, struggling with this, I'm guessing you mean the target and right or not, uh, because that is quite specific. But again, so what you need to understand, Thailand's also a difficult one, right? What's the price point of, um, of these batteries? Because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing broad target and strategy. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So, yeah, what's the price point? Because I'm guessing not everyone with, um, not everyone within Thailand, because obviously, you know, the, what is it, the, 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 the daily spend and stuff like that on, on in Thailand or the, the earnings I should say in Thailand are much less than the more affluent countries within Europe um, and if your battery is quite expensive then you understand that going broad might not be the best idea but with that said um, people will be pre-framed or qualified by the ad right so if, if you've got an advertisement that mentions this battery etc 200 plus per packs Okay, to be fair, I expected something much more expensive, but fair enough. Um, see, if your advertisement basically says, you know, this is battery for you know, boats and golf buggies, if you haven't got a, a boat or a golf buggy, then you're not going to be interested, right? So over time, Facebook will still find a way to um, optimize and realize, you know, who this ad is for and who it isn't. Another thing you can try, um, which I haven't actually tried myself, but it is something that makes sense, is try targeting and iPhone users. Because obviously in, you know, the Asian countries, um, what is it called? Like the Asia Pacific something something countries, APAC countries, a lot of the people there have Android and only the sort of affluent, um, you know, affluent people there have iPhone. So it might make sense to target iPhone users because obviously they have more, uh, more purchase and power, etc. And then from there, you know, basically get them to be qualified through the advertisement. Hope that makes sense. But uh, that's a random, that's a random client, man. I'm curious to see how you've actually stumbled onto that marine battery ads in Thailand. I like it. Um, and yeah, of course, you know, if this client already has like purchases and stuff, um, like a lot of purchases, then ask them for the purchase list and just run a retargeting or not retargeting lookalike audience off of that. So upload into Facebook, create a custom audience and then run a lookalike audience within Thailand. And uh, that'll give Facebook a bit more of an idea of who it needs to target. But um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the broad strategy, by the way. I hardly ever do very specific targeting anymore, unless I'm struggling to you know, get people through the flow, then I might give Facebook a little bit of an incentive uh, where to look for you know, by setting up specific targeting. 
Um, but yeah, let me just quickly go on to the other page. See if there are any more questions. Not so far. But yeah, anyway, back to the uh, hybrid outreach system. So like I said, that is completely revamped. 2021 proof, iOS 14 proof as well. And um, what I mentioned in the post as well, that we're actually looking for a few people to um, you know, basically come into the program. I explain how the hybrid outreach system works, you know, how we can set it up, how we can basically start getting, getting appointments on demand, uh, also pilot, if you will, um, so that you, know, you basically can um, increase the amount of clientele or you know, people that are coming into your pipeline, you know, because obviously, you know, if you haven't got a pipeline set up, if you're not getting calls booked, then no matter how good you're at Facebook ads, you know, the business will cease to exist because you're not getting enough people through. And at the end of the day, you know, it is about getting those calls booked, right? It is about outreach, the numbers, um, got, getting on calls with clients, building up relationships. And then once you get those in, keeping that back door short and getting results. And those are basically two pillars that my program really focuses on is, you know, setting up systems to get a lot of calls booked and then also really focusing on getting those results which is uh, something that I actually don't see a lot in courses and, and gurus promoting, etc. is the results part, right? It's all about, okay, getting clients in and outsourcing it for cheap and cheerful so that you get this big profit margin and you can sit from a coconut in a hammock um, somewhere where there's no pandemic, apparently. Um, but yeah, going forward, especially with the changes with iOS 14, with you know everything that's going on within Facebook, it's going to be very, very difficult to rely on outsourcers and rely on people that you hire on Upwork for cheap and cheerful to get results for your clients. So you really need to up your game um, with your service de delivery because you know you will fall behind. And with it being very, very saturated, you know the the sort of SMA sphere, um, getting good results can really, really separate yourself from the pack, right? Because yes, there are a lot of people offering SMA right now. A lot of people that have an agency right now but there's only a select few that are genuinely getting good results. And what I've noticed, and I've had a, a, a few conversations now with established agency owners as well, is that they are now almost leaving the outreach because they're getting so many referrals. Because as soon as you get a good result for one of your clients, and you know the client is happy with you, usually the client has a network right, of other business owners. Because let's face it, you know you sort of become the... Uh, the average of the people you surround yourself with and you know what is it you know the average of the five people you, sur you surround yourself with most um, if you surround yourself if you're a business owner you will most likely surround yourself with other business owners and vice versa if you have a lot of entrepreneurs as friends or within your network you'll most likely become an entrepreneur yourself because you know it just rubs off on you right so if you can get good results for let's say client one they are more than happy to refer you on to client two three and four because like I said, you know, you are the one that's getting the good results as opposed to a lot of these aspiring agencies. So if you can get good results, your reputation will increase for your agency. You will get more referrals and you know, it's much easier to scale an agency when you want to get good results because the clients that you have will stay with you for longer. And you know, if you can increase that client retention, you will earn more money per client, which means you can also spend more money to acquire a client. So it's like this, you know, positive, um, you know, positive feedback loop basically or flywheel effect. So yeah, focus on that outreach, but also focus on getting the results. And that is what we focus on with our program, what I teach you guys within my program. And uh, we have revamped everything. So we have uh, spots available. If you're interested, just send me a message if you wanna know more about it. You know, no pressure, of course, no strings attached. Just send me a message on Facebook and uh, I'll see if I can genuinely help you with this. Um, and yeah, if not, no hard feelings, of course. And if you can, then you know we can hop on a call and see if we are right fit for each other. Tom says, are you running your agency ads through your agency page? No, my Brampaneer agency page, as well as this Facebook page I'm on now, are both banned, uh, permanently restricted from advertising. Unfortunately, um, I've literally tried everything to get it back, but it's just not happening. So um, yeah, the Brampaneer agency page is there. We post results on it. But to be fair, there's not much we can do with it. Um, same goes for my Instagram as well, uh, which is also one of the reasons why I sort of lost a bit of interest in Instagram. Um, I grew my following quite quickly on Instagram because I was running paid traffic, literally running ads to grow my Instagram uh, to people interested in social media marketing, entrepreneurship, etc. But when everything got restricted and banned, the Instagram page also sort of um, you know 
got restricted. And uh, because my, I think my Instagram is part of the Facebook page and the Facebook page is banned and therefore the Instagram page, I can't run anything on either. Um, so yeah, I can't, can't use any of those assets anymore. And that is also the reason why my Instagram following has plateaued. Um, I think it's at the point now where I'm actually losing followers, but yeah, um, that's the reason why I've sort of lost interest in Instagram as well, because I can't grow it and I don't have the time nor the, uh, to be fair, don't have the time is obviously a really bad excuse, right? But let me put it this way. I don't prioritize spending time on Instagram uh, enough to grow it organically. So yeah, that is why that's sort of fall down the wayside. And uh, YouTube is something that I do really focus on. I enjoy the Facebook group is obviously organically grown quite well because of the YouTube. So that is why I'm putting a lot of time and effort into YouTube channel and the Facebook page as well. But um, yeah, for the ANC ads, um, the ANC page, I can't actually use any longer. Same goes for the Joshua Daniel Facebook page. But anyway, um, yeah, there's not a lot more questions that I've got as far as I can tell, as far as I can see. So we'll probably wrap up this live here. Guys, thank you so much. Um, Tom says Zooks is ruthless. Yeah, man. Like, like I said, I've tried everything. I've even tried like opening different profiles and then talking to the chat about the page. And they're just saying, if it's banned, it's banned. And it's, there's nothing you can do about it. So yeah, anyway, I will wrap up this live here, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Any questions?